the presentation of Floridian for Smart Growth, Jim Cameron, Roseanne. Wait a minute, where are you going? You have to come up here, excuse me, you gotta come up and introduce us. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <that's cool. laughs> yes, Jim. What's happening? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members. Uh, my name is Roseanne Tornator, and I am the Chair for Floridians for Smart Growth. Just here tonight to inform everybody basically what that is. There's a referendum going on the November ballot in 2010, and it sounds very nice. It's called Hometown Democracy. Hometown Democracy isn't nice. I've been in Florida for 38 years, and I'm a part of Floridians for Smarter Growth because I care about smart growth. And in doing so, Hometown Democracy is trying to make the public think that it's great to bypass the elected officials and not have them decide on anything when it comes to a change in comp plans or land code amendments and go directly to the voters, which would cost millions of dollars for the voters, a lot of time and energy. And I'm just here to let everyone know that we shouldn't change the system. We should change some of the land development codes and some of the comp plans and still let you elected officials do your job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Add to what Roseanne is saying is that with this amendment, oh, and I'm Jim Cameron with the uh, Chamber and Daytona Beach staff. See, but but um, Jim, most importantly, you live in Port Orange. Pardon me? You live in Port Orange. Sure. Okay. So, <laughs> I say, and happily. <laughs> but uh, just wanted to add, though, that this is going to require a, uh, additional votes by the entire electorate from each of the communities throughout the state of Florida. Um, there are probably several thousand amendments to uh, changes to comprehensive plans, and this is an estimated, perhaps lowly estimated, two to five uh, votes per the entire electorate from a community and you're talking a thorough study on all of these type issues but we already have in place right now is like Roseanne had said that uh, that we have a number of safeguards and a number of steps that have to be taken before a, a comp comprehensive plan can take place just like the uh, the Volusia Growth Management Commission that Debbie's just appointed to that's one example right there but there are a number of uh, there are a number of projects that are going to have to take place, things that are, may not all be always be desirable, uh, landfills, um, like say waste disposal sites, uh, relocation of public utilities, affordable housing projects, uh, like say rehab centers and all like that. And some community organizations out there may not want these and will campaign heavily against them, but they're all needed for any type of community to continue to exist. This could have a drastic impact on our economic development efforts. Uh, this has been a big time problem in St. Pete Beach, which has already adopted a local hometown uh, amendment. And it's really curtailing their, their economy right now, though. But, uh, like I said, there is going to be, in closing, October 16th, uh, our chamber and VCARD and Volusia Council of Governments are putting on a program that will outline the pros and the cons, which, whichever way you feel. That will be October 16th, and uh, you'll be hearing more about that. I think the main thing is that the public needs to be properly informed. Sure. Because what you see, the hammering you get, and the position they take, is that it's best for Florida. It is not best for There is, you have an elected official, you can change them. The problem that you got is you open it up to an electorate who is not properly informed, that does not know the long range plan, doesn't know the economic impact, yet they control the future. And growth isn't the only thing. You can have non growth, it still should be controlled by the electorate. Sure should. Appreciate it, Jim. Thank you very much. Thank you.